Funding provided for the following program on America's health and well-being is made possible by Bristol-Myers Squibb Pharmaceutical Group, providers of innovative prescription medicines and diagnostic products worldwide. I don't know my cholesterol level. I never checked. But I think mine's about 225 or something like that. Uh, 167. No, I don't know what it is. It was like 237. It's like 160. 173. I have no idea. <laughs> Do you know what your cholesterol number is? Hello, I'm Faith Daniels. Thanks to educational campaigns, it's common knowledge that a high level of cholesterol in the blood is one of the most important risk factors for heart disease. So what's a safe level of cholesterol? Below 200 milligrams per deciliter is considered desirable. Yet statistics suggest that over half of the adult population in this country is above 200. Heart disease is still the nation's number one killer. Every year, more than one million Americans suffer a heart attack, and half as many die of the disease. But how many of us actually take steps to lower our cholesterol? Should women be as concerned about it as men? And how important is it for our children and senior citizens? It's only recently that researchers have turned their attention to these questions, and the answers may surprise you. These kids from New York City are taking part in a healthy heart campaign. With high cholesterol and no exercise, if you have a heart attack, you just might die. The East Harlem Healthy Heart Program is one of eight in New York State and one of the few in the country directed at low-income groups in the inner city. Oh, no. <laughs> you don't like that, right? Data collected from the original volunteers, many of whom are now in their 70s, and from their spouses and offspring, continue to confirm the link between cholesterol and heart disease. It's following case histories over decades, in studies like this, that has made it possible to predict levels of risk. Adults are considered to be at high risk if their total cholesterol is above 240 milligrams per deciliter. Between 239 to 200 is borderline. And below 200 is desirable. This is the blood going through the mitral valve into the left ventricle. I'm Dr. Efros, how are you today? Okay. What uh, brings you to the TMJ Facial Pain Center? On the intake form that we use to pre-evaluate the patient's needs, he's drawn a picture of several areas on his face and his head that he has pain. I would say that I haven't gone a full day without feeling great. Let's put it that way. In this center, my greatest satisfaction is to be able to comprehensively manage somebody who comes in in significant pain and perhaps with some uh, level of dysfunction and bring them to the point where this is no longer a factor in their daily life. I just can't face all these problems. I mean, if she would have told us what she wanted. Yes, but she she didn't, and it's up to us. I think we should sign this order and take her home. Major funding for Health Call with Karen Hasby is made possible by the New Jersey Department of Health. Additional funding provided by Deborah Heart and Lung Center, Amera Health, the American Cancer Society, Mercer Medical Center, and the New Jersey Hospital Association. Hello, I'm Karen Hasby. 
For Americans, death is the ultimate taboo. No one wants to talk about it, even when talking about it might mean better care and comfort for a dying patient. I know there was a court decision just recently in New York State lifting the ban on physician-assisted suicide, and which has caused a, a tremendous amount of for and against kind of, of reaction. How do the three of you see that as changing this whole issue? Dr. Sher, do you want to start? Well, I first have to say that I think there's a very big difference between physician-assisted suicide and physician-assisted dying. Um, when I, as a physician, withhold and withdraw life-sustaining measures from a patient who is dying in the dying process, my intention is to relieve pain and to allow nature to take its course. But I want to ask Mr. Armstrong first, do you think that with this court New York ruling that this is going to be a wave across the country? Are we going to see more of these kinds of decisions? I think what we'll see is the United States Supreme Court accept this case for the first time there. From Quinlan through Kuzan, the court has embraced the right of each of us to make a fundamental decision about choices at the end of life, not necessarily to die. There is no such thing as a fundamental constitutional right to die. Uh, the mortality statistics haven't changed since Adam and Eve. They still remain one per person. What I think you'll see is that for the first time, the United States Supreme Court will take that case out of New York, will take those two cases out of Washington and Oregon, and we as a nation will openly, objectively, and forthright argue about whether or not these rights really include the notion of physician-assisted physician suicide or, a step further, actual euthanasia. Can you cut it? Should you cut it? How much is too much when it comes to cholesterol? More Americans die of heart disease than from all kinds of cancer combined. So is it any wonder that we all want to know what to do about it? But the questions are a lot easier than the answers. The evidence isn't always clear and the experts don't always agree. But they're here now from all over the country to sort out some solutions to a health threat facing every one of us. Let me introduce you to our distinguished panel today. Dr. Jay Brown is the president of the Association of Black Cardiologists and is the Harlem Hospital Chief of Cardiology, whose Heart of Harlem program works to cut heart disease in part by cutting fat and cholesterol. Dr. Bruce Siegel knows all about that kind of thing. He's New Jersey's top doc, his state's commissioner of health. His specialty is preventive medicine. That's Dr. Sandra McClanahan's focus, too, but with a somewhat different point of view. From her base in Virginia, she looks at preventing heart disease with an eye to the east. Not just nutrition and exercise, but yoga, meditation, whatever works to reduce stress. If you've already been working on the stress in your life, you may know Dr. Robert Elliott's book, which pointedly asks, is it worth dying for? A one-time heart attack victim himself, his Denver-based institute is devoted solely to stress. He says not just diet, but stress can actually drive up your cholesterol. For Dr. Robert Olson of the State University of New York at Stony Brook, the focus is nutrition. A former president of the American Institute of Nutrition and a leader in cardiovascular research, he says mainstream medicine has gone too far on cholesterol. There is nothing mainstream about Gary Null. From his nationally syndicated radio show, he preaches a different kind of diet, one that's strictly vegetarian. He says the guidelines drawn up by the National Cholesterol Education Program of the National Institutes of Health stop far short of making a real difference. And that puts him at odds with Dr. Luther Clark, the director of preventive cardiology at the State University of New York at Brooklyn, and a member of the expert panel that actually drew up those national guidelines on cholesterol. And finally, the San Francisco doctor takes his patients far beyond the national guidelines, and the title of his book says it all. It is called Dr. Dean Ornish's Program for Reversing Heart Disease. He says it can be done without drugs or surgery. Please welcome them all. That, that you think that we should not eat any animal products? With the exception, I'm not opposed to eggs. I have not been convinced that eggs are a primary factor in cholesterol. I feel that people have inadvertently taken an important nutritional source out of their diet. And fish is very important because of the omega-3 fatty acids, which directly have, in numerous studies, helped a person's cholesterol come down. 
I'm interested in looking epidemiologically. Look at the people in China. A child born today in Shanghai will live a longer than a child born in New Jersey or New York. 